Okay, I'm here with my good friend, Oliver Goldsmith, the Oliver Goldsmith, the one and only, and we're going to talk today about Ulysses. Now, I think you might know the story from the introduction video that Oliver and I get together and talk books from time to time. And one day he mentioned to me that he was going to tackle Ulysses. And he asked about a reference book. And I said, reference book? Why, I will make you a video series, foolishly. I dove into that. And uh, so here we are, halfway through our video series. And I thought it would be good for the other readers to just get a sense of what it's like for another first-time reader to uh, share their experience and, and just let them know what that experience is, is like. That's a little fumbly, but uh, I'm not a writer. So with that as our background, Oliver, first of all, let's, let's ask the question, what made you decide to take up Ulysses? I guess uh, I would say I've always wanted to take on books that are considered major works of art, or includes listening to major pieces in the musical field, uh, looking at major pieces of art, uh, major poems. Uh, anyone who tells me the hundred best something knows I get a glint in my eye and I try to find it. And Ulysses sits on the top. Secondly, uh, I am a reader. I consider myself somewhat knowledgeable as a, as a layman about reading, just a pretender, so to speak, but enjoy it. Um, I have a statue of Oliver Goldsmith, who I am, in the front of Trinity College. So any of you who've traveled there would know. Would recognize you. I am Oliver Goldsmith, and I've kept my age pretty well. I won't disclose what I eat. But uh, I wrote The Deserted Village and other major pieces. So those are the, the reasons for it. And I also believe that it's, uh, it's I, I like uh, it, going after a project and studying it deeply. And here was this unlikely opportunity with my friend offering me the bait. Yeah. <laughs> Who has ever offered someone an entire YouTube series? And I took it. I'm still waiting for the fee schedule, but there's never been one. <laughs> oh, it'll be there. <laughs> I, I, I took it, and the, the hook is in my brain. And basically, as Chris and I know jokingly, uh, I keep waiting for the next shipment. The shipment means episode. And uh, I stand at the wharf waiting for the boat to come in from some uh, trade, illicit trade, to get my next episode, not chapter. And uh, that's why I was so pleased to get Wandering Rocks. Those are my answers. Great. Well, you know, it, when I uh, volunteered this, it's it's much more difficult than I anticipated. I I have a speaking knowledge of the book, but to sit down and put a chapter in a ten minute synopsis, uh, I thought would be easier than it is. And um, now then it went to twenty minutes, and then thirty, and then this last one was forty minutes with a with a add-on <laughs> so it's it's there's a lot there there's a lot of material you've you started the book before like a lot of people that actually make it through that they're reading the book is like quitting smoking a lot of people start and, and never make it you started before i think did you not i believe i just i i have i i know i have because i it's like have you ever tasted that food I know I have, but I can't recall ever digging in deeply after the first chapter. I think I gave up early on. I read the portrait of the artist, Dubliners, and, and, and I've seen some, maybe even some movies about Joyce and Nora. Um, but I, I just gave up because I, you do need some guidance. And as I told Chris, I told you, Chris, I have you helping me in this YouTube, which is invaluable. I also hired, use my lingo, Harry Blamire. And I would recommend Harry Blamire's edition to help people wade through the first reading or second reading. And so I used the two uh, educators to help me. And that's what you need for this book. I don't believe I'm capable 
of getting Joyce his humor, his observations, his connections, to any degree successfully without some guidance. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and boy, does it pay off as I reread. So for example, I reread maybe a three or four pages of Wandering Rocks already after my first read, and I, you could see me smiling because I, I got it. Right, right. You you mentioned to me that it's like uh, you play the piano. Yes. And and very well. And you mentioned it's like a, a a bit like a musical piece. Yes. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, for example, if anyone who, who plays Chopin, for example, um, the ballade in G minor is a is a most wonderful piece for for an amateur to play. It's it, it's first effort. You, I could never bring it much musicality, and I don't think many people can. <laughs> but taking it bar by bar, eight bar segments, really understanding it, hearing some of the great players of it, maybe reading about it a little bit, having worked on the ballad perhaps for 20 years, um, I understand it. I got it. Not ready for Carnegie Hall by any chance, by any means, but I got it. I did it the first time wrong. And so I realized, well, I think I asked you how many times you read Wandering Rock, I think you said close to 100. Um, so I played ballad for 20, 25 years with the teacher and studied it and practiced eight bar segments of it uh, to where my family is saying, stop already, we can't take it <coughs> to get it. So I got it. Hi, Chris. Hello. I'm in the interview now. <laughs> <laughs> so reading Ulysses is work. Pleasant work. I mean, this is fun to learn, and this is a fun work. So that's how I compare it to the musical experience. It and, takes study. And it and it, it there's. If you don't want to study? Don't play Chopin, Chopin's ballad. I mean, play uh, you know Happy New Year. And it, and it should be no shame in the fact that the book is not an easy go for anybody. For anybody. I, I hope anybody watching this knows, I'm a bit pretentious saying this, I'm a pretty well-known reader. I mean, to my friends, nothing on the level of the big time people, but anyone who, I read a lot and that I, I couldn't get Ulysses. I'm a beginner with Ulysses. And that's kind of the fun of it, by the way, to do something different. People say, hey, get to be my age, why don't you try something different, folk dancing or something. <laughs> well, I'm not interested in folk dancing, but I'm, I'm dancing with uh, you with Joyce. That's right. It's kind of fun. That's right. I'm, lot of, I'm even contemplating a day in Dublin. Might walk the whole route. All right, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a kick. That's right. Is there is there anything that you've come across in this book that resonates with you that you can like uh, to really relate to, to on a on a gut level, and I, the reason I ask is the book is over a hundred years old, and it is amazing to me that the ideas it's almost like a suspension of time. the The ideas, what people experience, the the life is so similar to today that we can find things, and I just wonder if you experience that yourself, if you can feel it. I would answer this by fusing two points. One is I, I've, I've had the notion, and I've read it somewhere obviously, that each of us has eyes that see from our soul the evolution of a person or life and the learning. That's one point. And, and on my curiosity about people evolving, do we change, do we not change? Uh, and, and this on the gut level to respond to your question resonates with me because I see, I'm beginning to see Leopold, he's a friend of mine, beginning to evolve and, and to, to, to deal with Molly and this sad event that she's having this affair and he's taught thinking about it all the time and 
trying to buy her gifts and be nice to her. And I'm not sure why at this point, but I, he's a good guy. So I, I like seeing that in a person. It makes me reflect on my own life, on people I know. And I have moved from, hey, you don't change, Chris. You're just the same guy you were when you were 11, to that's not correct at all. We are evolving in our thinking and our being and our broadness of, of uh, understanding of things. And it's part of life. And so it's interesting for me in this book. It, it's so compressed in it's 24 hours. Yes. And as, and maybe as you said or somebody said, and of course the book, the masters in poetry say, I think they say, show, don't tell. I hope I got that right because if I didn't, I'm going to be embarrassed. Show, don't tell. He's, he's showing that's right. He's not telling us. He doesn't tell us that Leopold is a generous, caring man and charitable. He shows us that. Yes. And he shows us that Friar Kami, or however you pronounce his name, will just give the sign of the cross and didn't give a dime to that poor guy. Yes. So I like being more observant to show and tell in my own life and in this novel. That resonates with me from the gut. Great, great. So, do you have any closing thoughts? Any any words of wisdom? As we're we're now just about halfway, and there's some intense stuff coming up. There's a couple of chapters that are pretty heavy duty. Well, I, I just think that I, I'm I've crossed the threshold. I mean, I'm up in the air. I'm flying this airplane. And uh, you, you're the instructor. I don't know if you're in the plane with me anymore or not, but I'm I'm in the air, and I'm crossing the Atlantic, and uh, I'm going to land successfully. There's, there's no going back now. I, there's I, no going back now. <laughs> there's no going back now. I'm in the wandering rocks, and and I and I, I'm 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 very proud of myself, by the way, just as a side that I'm doing this, and I'm in it. So. If you suddenly say, I didn't mention the fee schedule here for the YouTube, fine. I'm, I'm going to do it. I got other guys helping me, Mr. Blamire, and I advise that to everybody. So it's exciting to, to consider myself uh, accomplishing this. I haven't yes. done it yet. I haven't finished first year, but first uh, read. But I, as I said to you in one of our conversations, check with me when I've read it 20 times. <laughs> to see a guy who, who can give a, his own YouTube. All right. All right. right. Great. I wish I had a lot of fun with it. Well, that's that's great. I, I, I appreciate that you motivated this project, and I really appreciate your thoughts on, on where we are to date, and I think that will serve as an encouragement for other people who are having their – everybody that faces this book has a struggle, and, and – we, it, it's such a tightrope between, uh, you know, academics and and getting through those references and having it be fun still. And, you know, we're trying to thread that needle and, and keep it fun, but still put enough of the the reality and the, and the references so that you can, uh, the reader can appreciate the, the art behind this, that there is a lot there, but that's like any great art is complex there's there's a lot to be had or or we could all do it you know so I'm not the former ulysses book club but i don't know if i could the friends i mentioned it to left the room right away well maybe when we're done we can recruit more people we'll have the whole video series to point to and say there you go frankly it would be fun to have a worldwide ulysses book club it would be it would be. It would be very interesting. Well, I sure appreciate your taking the time for this, and I'm sure other people will appreciate your uh, perspective as a first-time journey through this odyssey. So I have to leave. I see Boylan coming down. The <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> That'll work. Ollie? Play me out.